Tiffany hesitated. The only other real person was going away, leaving her here with nothing but the trees and the shadows. And of course, anything horrible that was running towards her through them. Uh, she said, hello, rob anybody? William, Dutch Woolley? There was no reply. There wasn't even an echo. She was alone, apart from her heartbeats. Well, of course, she'd fought things and won, hadn't she? But the Nakmak Fegels had been there and somehow that made it easier. They never gave up. They'd attack absolutely anything and they didn't know the meaning of the word fear. Tiffany, who had read her way through the dictionary, had a second thought there. Fear was only one of thousands of words the Pictures probably didn't know the meaning of. Unfortunately, she did know what it meant and the taste and feel of fear too. She felt it now. She gripped the pan. It didn't seem quite such a good weapon anymore. The cold blue shadows between the trees seemed to be spreading out. They were darkest ahead of her, where the hoof prints led. Strangely enough, the wood behind her seemed almost light and inviting. Someone doesn't want me to go on, she thought. That was quite encouraging, but the twilight was misty and shimmered unpleasantly. Anything could be waiting. She was waiting too. She realised that she was waiting for the Nakmak Feagles, hoping against hope that she'd hear a sudden cry even of Crivens! She was sure it was a swear word. She pulled out the toad, which lay snoring on the palm of her hand, and gave it a prod. Hmm, it croaked. I'm stuck in a wood of evil dreams, and I'm all alone, and I think it's getting darker, said Tiffany. What should I do? The toad opened one bleary eye and said, Leave. That is not a lot of help. The best advice there is, said the toad. Now put me back. The cold makes me lethargic. Reluctantly, Tiffany put the creature back in her apron pocket, and her hand touched diseases of the sheep. She pulled it out and opened it at random. There was a cure for the steams, but it had been crossed out in pencil. Written in the margin, in Granny Aching's big, round, careful handwriting was, This don't work. One dessert spoonful of turpentine do. Tiffany closed the book with care and put it back gently so as not to disturb the sleeping toad. Then, gripping the pan's handle tightly, she stepped into the long blue shadows. How do you get shadows when there's no sun? In the sky, she thought, because it was better to think about things like this than all the other much worse things that were on her mind. But these shadows didn't need light to create them. They crawled around on the snow of their own accord and backed away when she walked towards them. That at least was a relief. They piled up behind her. They were following her. She turned and stamped her foot a few times and they scurried off behind the trees. But she knew they were flowing back when she wasn't looking. She saw a drone in the distance ahead of her, standing half hidden behind a tree. She screamed at it and waved the pan threateningly and it lumbered off quickly. When she looked round, she saw two more behind her a long way back. The track led uphill a little, into what looked like a much thicker mist. It glowed faintly. She headed for it. There was no other way to go. When she reached the top of the rise, she looked down into a shallow valley. There were four drones in it, big ones, bigger, bigger than any she'd seen so far. They were sitting down in a square, their dumpy legs stretched out in front of them. Each one had a gold collar around its neck, attached to a chain. Tame ones, Tiffany wondered aloud, but who could put a collar around the neck of a drone? Only someone who could dream as well as they could. We tame the sheepdogs to help us herd sheep, she thought. The Queen uses drones to herd dreams. In the centre of the square, formed by the drones, the air was full of mist. The hoof tracks and the tracks of Roland led down past the tame drones and into a cloud. Tiffany spun round. The shadows darted back. There was nothing else nearby. No birds sang. Nothing moved in the woods. But she could make out three more drones now, their big round socky faces peering at her around tree trunks. She was being herded now. At a time like this, it would be nice to have someone around to say something like, No, it's too dangerous. Don't do it. Unfortunately, there wasn't. She was going to commit an act of extreme bravery and no one would know if it, at all, if it 
all went wrong. That was frightening, but also annoying. That was it, annoying. This place annoyed her. It was all stupid and strange. It was the same feeling she'd had when Jenny had leaped out of the river, out of her river, and the Queen had taken her brother. Maybe it was selfish to think like that, but anger was better than fear. Fear was a damp, cold mess, but anger had an edge. She could use it. They were herding her like a sheep. Well, an angry sheep could send a vicious dog away whimpering. So, four big dreams sitting in a square. It's going to be a big dream. Raising the pan to shoulder height, to swipe at anything that came near, and suppressing a dreadful urge to go to the toilet, Tiffany walks slowly down the slope, across the snow, through the mist, and into summer.